Hello, everybody, and welcome to Podcast 17.1. We're going to be moving electrons all over the place. Ah, 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 ah. We'll do oxidation numbers, balancing, and acid and base. Define these wonderful things and learn how to draw a galvanic cell. So let's hop to it. Assigning oxidation numbers the following. We've done this before. So remember the rules of oxidation numbers is oxygen is always negative 2 unless it's peroxide. Um, hydrogen is always plus 1 unless it is um, unless it is NaH. So if I know that, then if I have HNO3, um, each oxygen is negative 2, each hydrogen is plus 1. So that means this nitrogen right here, since this has a net charge of 0, must be plus 5. So H equals 1, N equals 5, O equals negative 2, not 6. So oxidation numbers for one of them, not a whole bunch of them. If I have lead 2 sulfate, oh look, sulfate is negative 2. This must be lead 2. So PB equals plus 2. Oxygen, we know, is negative 2. So that leaves sulfur. So if I have PB, SO4, so plus 2, minus 8, this must be plus 6. I'm sorry, I wrote this all over the place. And that's too long. I don't want to do it. So, and neither do you. Um, balance the following acidic medium. So remember, if we balance an acid, um, first we balance the thing change in charge. Thing changing charge. Then we add H2O to balance the O's. And then we add H positives to balance the H's. So the first thing I need to do is find the thing that changes charge. So I've got permanganate and Mn plus 2. So negative 1 turns into Mn plus 2. So I have the same number of Mn, so that's good. I have four oxygens over here, so I need four H2Os to balance the oxygens. And then I have eight hydrogens over here, so I need eight H positives. And then check my charge. The right-hand side is plus two. The left-hand side is plus seven. Don't forget that one right there. So I need five electrons on this side. And then aluminum turns into aluminum plus three. And that's all balanced, so all I need to do is add three electrons over here. To make this balance, I need to find the least common multiple. So top by three, bottom by five, add them all up. So I have 24 H positives plus three MnO4s plus five aluminums yields three Mn plus twos plus 12 H2O plus 5 Al plus 3. All right, balance and base. Remember, you use two times the hydroxides to balance the O's. Okay, so we have aquil and chloride to start with, so those ones change the charge. Oops, sorry. So two hydroxides, and then that means to balance my um, O's now, uh, to balance my H's, I add water, so H2O. So notice here I have one, two oxygens, and I have two oxygens, which is peachy. Now I need to balance my charges. The left-hand side is minus three. I'm sorry, the right-hand side is minus three. The left-hand side is minus one. So I need two electrons over here. And then magnesium and magnesium hydroxide. Now I can try and make this crazy, but I won't. So that's OH2, OH negative, so balance my OHs plus two electrons, which all cancels out. Notice here, by the way, two hydroxides cancel with two hydroxides. So I have H2O plus aquil. Whoa plus magnesium yields, wow, chloride, 
plus n. All right, so now we're refreshed in five minutes of fun. Definition, oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. Oxidizing agents cause oxidation. They are reduced. And reducing agents cause reduction. They are oxidized. So these agent things make more sense if you think of something like a killing agent. Okay? So Joe is a killing agent. So if Joe is a killing agent, is Joe being killed? No, Joe does the killing. That's why Joe's gone all the time. He's out killing people, saving the world. Okay? So a killing agent is not killed. It causes other things to be killed. Okay? If we're all sitting around playing poker, I want to be a losing agent. If I'm a losing agent playing poker, that means I'm making you lose, which means I am winning. Duh. So if I have solid silver dissolves in nitric acid, silver plus HNO3, I know it's going to dissolve, so it's going to turn into Ag positive. So silver's charge went up. Something, hydrogen, nitrogen, or oxygen's charge must go down. So, and first of all, HNO3, this is negative 6 for 3, negative 2's, plus 1. So right now I have nitrogen at plus 5. I need nitrogen's charge to go down. So I'm going to pick, I'm going to guess something, NO. O is negative 2, N would be plus 2. So I'll go ahead and do that one, plus NO. So now I figured out something that would make sense. I have seen this compound before. It is brown and smells like smog. And... I can now do the redox balancing to do this. So start with silver. Ag turns into Ag positive plus one electron. HNO3 is going to turn into NO plus, now the first thing I want to do is balance my oxygens. This is in acid. It's nitric acid. So I need two more oxygens. So I am going to add uh, two more oxygens, so two H2Os. And now I have four hydrogens on the left and one on the right, so I need three H's over here. So to balance my charge, the right-hand side has a charge of nothing, and the right-hand side is plus three, so three electrons. Then I add all of that up. Well, first of all, I multiply the top by three, which I'm sure you can do, and add that up. So now something new. Way too much review, but we haven't done it for a while. Galvanic cells are spontaneous. So this is what will happen spontaneously. You don't need to add energy. You don't hook it up to a battery. It just goes. You need to be able to identify the anode and the cathode. Now, typically, but not always, the anode is on the left. It doesn't need to be, but if you write it in common notation, it helps if you put the anode on the left, especially if I'm grading it so I know that it's there. So the anode is typically on the left, and the anode does oxidation. So if it does oxidation, oxidation is loss of electrons. So if it's losing electrons, they're moving it, moving it over here from the left to the right. Okay. The cathode uh, does reduction. So an ox versus a red cat. Okay. So reduction is gain of electrons. So look, these electrons are coming in here. Looky, looky, looky. Okay. Then you have a salt bridge or a porous disk, and the salt bridge allows the circuit to be completed. So if the electrons are flowing from left to right here, by the way, electrons always flow from anode to cathode, um, what happens is you need to complete the circuit. So your salt bridge is typically something that's always soluble. Um, I recommend KNO3. So your nitrates will go this way, and your K positives would also go this way. So um, so if electrons are going this way, what's happening is your metal dissolves. And on this one, your metal plates. Because it's gaining electrons. So if I have, for example, Ag positive plus one electron, I'm making solid silver. And that is straight cash, homie. And if I have anode over here, it's dissolving. That means I would have, say it's copper, yields copper plus two, plus two electrons. And those two electrons go out the wire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.
So we've got all that done. Porous disk is the exact same thing. I just don't want to draw it twice. Electrons flow from anode to cathode, which we could talk about in the online lab. The salt bridge completes the circuit, and ions flow both ways, which we just did. Draw the galvanic cell for a nickel-zinc system. Now, when you have a galvanic cell, E cell has to be positive. Okay, now don't ask you if you don't know what negative means, then you can ask your other science Olympiad coaches what negative really means. But positive is what this is. Oh, yeah, sorry, negative means left. So when I do this, one of these guys is going to have to be flipped. We know reduction has to happen in one place, and oxidation is the other. So I'm going to flip this guy, because if I flip him, I will end up with a positive cell. So I will get rid of poor little zinc here, and I'll have zinc yields zinc plus 2, plus 2 electrons and my charge is now plus 0.76 and that is my cell and my electrons cancel out which is nice so now I will draw them again I like to do my anode on the left and anode is oxidation which is loss of electrons so this is oxidation so this is my anode so I will draw my little beaker of zinkiness so this is zinc and this would be, I need a zinc ion, which is zinc plus 2, and probably nitrate. And then over here, I'll have nickel. And nickel plus 2. And nitrate, probably. I need a salt bridge. Now, salt bridge in, like, fancy places are porous disks. Salt bridges in Indiana is a string soaked in potassium nitrate water. So, again, my electrons, I'll change color because that's fun. My electrons flow from anode to cathode, and I don't know why my string looks like a spring, but that's okay. Um, and then there's my galvanic cell for it, I guess. And then I'd have nitrates going this way, completing the circuit, and K positivity going this way. Oh, joy, I'm almost done. Draw the galvanic cell based on the following half reactions under standard conditions. Uh, okay, so I have to flip one of these. I have electrons on both sides. So, if I am flipping these guys, the one that I'm going to flip, because I need to keep it positive, is this guy. So, this guy will be flipped to iron, yields Fe plus 3, plus 3 electrons. And it becomes negative 0.036 volts. Okay, now, if you notice here, I don't have anything that is a solid, so I can't have a little... You know, my little beaker of metal, I need a beaker that will not react with this. So you want a precious metal that will not react, and my favorite precious metal is platinum. So looking here, by the way, this is the reduction, which is the red cathode. So I'll put it over here, cathode, and this thing right here is not going to be manganese because it'll react. It will be platinum. So if you do not have a solid metal you're dealing with, you will use platinum because it is unreactive. So what is used for the electrode of the permanganate system? Platinum. What is used for the iron system? Iron. And then both of those other ions are here, Mn plus 2. And then also in there is MnO4. And H positive and all that other junk. This is Fe plus whatever it is. Fe plus 3 another junk to go through it. Okay, So I realize if you're stuck with that, don't have a metal in your reaction, use platinum. To review, find the oxidation numbers, trust the outside, and then calculate. So we talked about how H is always plus 1, O is always negative 2, and then the outside is trustier than the inside. Balance the acid, add H positive, and then water. Balance the base, twice the hydroxide, and then water. And ox, red cat, electron flows from anode to cathode. E cell must be positive, and even more important than all of that, is that I like to move it. So move it nice and sweet and sassy. And have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow.